I do have this unmuted, right? Yes, I do. It sounds like I do at least. So I wanted, I, I'm glad to see people here to find out about the PSF. Um, it's always hard to know exactly what I should tell you. I can probably drone on and make it boring and sound horrible, and I'd rather, rather not do that. So I'm going to show you a few screens of facts and figures, but not, not very much. And then I would really like to um, open this up so that anything you want to ask about or discuss uh, we discuss. So that, that I think would be much, much more profitable. If you do want to refer to any of the, the things here, you can go look at the slides. They are here and I've got that at the bottom of every slide so that uh, we don't have to worry about that. So in that case, uh, you, can, you can go look there. There is a final at the end page of resources that you can check out. But that's what I want to do. So going to leave it in English this time. I, I, I gave it to you in Spanish earlier, but just to restate, mission of the Python Software Foundation is to promote, protect, and advance the Python programming language. So part one is the language. Uh, part two is to support and facilitate growth. So support, grow, diverse international community of Python programmers. That, that is our mission. If we are not doing that, to the best of our ability, we are not doing what we are supposed to at the PSF. So that, 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 is, that is the thing that we always have to come back to. If somebody comes to us as the board of directors of the PSF and asks us to do something, maybe it's to give them money, maybe it's to do something else, ultimately, we have to answer this question. Does it do any of that? So just something to keep in mind. Um, so, I mentioned before intellectual property licenses, trademarks. Maybe the only thing that is worth mentioning in terms of, of intellectual property licenses, trademarks, I guess two things. One of them is that we have to protect our, our intellectual property. The way that the laws work for things like copyright, software license, logos, word marks as they call it. The way that the law works for those things is if you do not consistently protect it, then if somebody does actually take it without your permission, if you haven't been defending it, you have a much weaker case in court because it looks like you don't care. So. Sometimes people will do things that seem pretty harmless, but they violate our intellectual property and we have to tell them to stop. Because if we didn't tell them to stop, then the next time somebody came and did something, we would have less power to tell them to stop until we had no power over it and they could do whatever they wanted. We don't want that. That's not what we're here for. So, so that's one thing. Second thing is if you want to use the logo, which sometimes people do, if you search on Google for Python logo, you can find it, and we have a bunch of them, different formats. Um, there are a couple of rules. One of them is that if you're using it for something like a conference or you're using it for Python, you usually find to use it as long as you don't change its shape. So you'll notice for Python S, we have a, a lovely logo. It's got different colors. That's fine but it does not have a different shape. And, and that even includes some places that like try to put a hat on it. No, it's a different shape, can't do it. So, so just in case you were wondering, that's, those are some of the considerations. If you want to sell things with the logo on it, we, we prefer that you ask first and then, as long as, again, it doesn't change the shape, it's, it's reasonable. We then say, hey, it would be really nice if you would give us 10% uh, since you're using our logo. We, we, we wouldn't sue somebody necessarily, but it would be really nice. So that's, that's the intellectual property part. Uh, does anybody have any questions or about what? Uh, any, anything you'd like to ask about this? Again, I, I, I don't want to just run on. If anybody has any questions. Okay. Well, 
let's let's keep going. So big list of names. Uh, this is the current board of directors. So we have on this board we have 13 people because and I'll talk about this in a second. Uh, Amy Godlowska, our a director of operations, we added as a board member who votes. And we moved Van Lindbergh, who is a past chair of, of the foundation, but he's also our lawyer. So we have moved him to the position of general counsel so that basically he answers our legal questions. So, so that's why we now have more people than we used to. Uh, we have, just to call out some things, uh, we have Marlene Mangani, who is uh, from uh, Zimbabwe. So that's our first African member of the board. Uh, we have uh, Paola Pacheco, who is from Brazil. So she is the first South American on the PSF board. So we've done a couple of things that way uh, that, that we've been very happy about. Um, and, and basically, both of those two ran because some other board member talked them into running. So uh, Lorena Mesa <coughs> talked Marlene into running. I talked Paola into running. Uh, so we, we're trying hard to make sure we have representation from uh, a broad range. Officers, just so you know, Guido is the president of the PSF. By definition, his duties include, and that's all. <laughs> Okay, he does not do anything. That's part of the deal. He does not want to do anything, but he is the official president. Uh, chair, my job, people think that this is important. As I keep saying, it's not particularly important. I'm basically like the person who has the keys to open up the building. I mean, we have online meetings, but I call the meetings and, and, and run through the agenda. And, have to put my name in various places, but it's it's not as though if I said go and do that, somebody's going to go and do that. That's not going to happen. So uh, we have two vice chairs. Van is one of the vice chairs. Thomas is the other one. They take over if the chair can't do anything. Uh, we have a couple of communications officers. Uh, Lorena is in charge of the PSF blog. There is a PSF blog. Most people don't even know this. Um, and Kushal Das is in charge of publishing our minutes. So if you want to know what goes on, we publish those as well. So um, we, we try to be, be transparent. We have a, a, a treasurer. Uh, Ava does a lot of jobs. Betsy Walachewski does things like manage PyCon and sponsorship for PyCon and stuff like that. And um, Actually, that's a typo on my part. That should say 2018 and 19. The, the PyCon US chair for the next two years uh, is Ernest Durbin, who's been in charge, has been deeply involved with Python packaging as well, so you can say it from that. So that's, that's all the people. Again, this is the boring stuff, but just so that you know, uh, we pay those five people. So this is a, a high point for the PSF. We have five employees two full-time, three half-time. So basically we have Mark Mangoba is in charge of infrastructure. If things break, he's our immediate person to do this. Because before, if you only have volunteers running your infrastructure and something breaks and they're all at their regular jobs, then you can't ask them to get, you know, basically to get fired so that they can go fix the PSF thing for free. So we have a part-time uh, person to manage infrastructure, and uh, we still rely a lot on volunteers to fix things. So um, like last week, I think it was, the documentation links for downloading the documentation broke, and suddenly there were 100 messages to the infrastructure list. And you know, I was just kind of, I can't, load the, I can't download the 3.4 PDF documentation. I can't download the 3.4. Everybody sort of wrote in the same problem, but um, so he's in charge of, of managing those situations. And uh, basically, we have a treasurer accountant, Phyllis. She's new. 
she is going to ultimately take over from Kurt. And there's a lot of check writing and a lot of stuff that goes on. So basically, there's a lot of this stuff that we now have people to do. Uh, it used to be that board members did a lot of this. And that is about the worst practice you can have, is to have board members actually doing day-to-day -day stuff. No, nobody recommends that you ever do that. Uh, so we're trying to move away and, and actually follow best practices by having operational stuff that employees should do. We have employees do that now. Um, so I mentioned the membership stuff. I don't want to beat this to death, but the thing I found is that nobody knows. And even after I say it once, Almost nobody knows, and so I say it a few more times. So that's why I, I'm, I'm saying this. Um, if you go, and I have heard reports that people have gone to sign up to be a basic member. I'll show you the spot just in a second. Uh, and yes, I do have the stickers. Uh, just I know that nobody cares about the stickers, but I have them. Uh, so if um, if you go and sign up, basically you don't get to vote, but you're on the community mailing list, you show your support, and we have an understanding of, okay, so we have X number of people in Spain who say that they are basic members of the PSF, and X number of people here. It gives us an ability to, to say what our support is in the world. So it's, it's, it's useful. Um, supporting member is the 99 USD donation that I mentioned. Um, managing member is the working group, and I'll tell you about working groups in a second. Contributing is the five hours or more a month. And again, people will ask, okay, so suppose I figured it very precisely, and I think maybe I spend four hours and 50 minutes a month. Is that okay? Yes, that is okay. Uh, our idea is to be inclusive rather than exclusive. So if you are doing community organizing work, that's fine. If you say, okay, so I'm going to put some Python code on GitHub and I'm going to say that I spend five hours a month maintaining my project in Python on GitHub, does that count? Uh, what I say is judged by your conscience and your judgment. Do you think that you are contributing to the Python community or not? Okay? Uh, so, you know, obviously, if you write something as popular as requests, there's no doubt. Uh, on the other hand, if you write something that has maybe like one person following on a GitHub, maybe that's on the other end of the spectrum. So you, you need to decide. But we're not trying to keep people out. We want people in rather than out. Then, as, as I mentioned, fellows, this used to be the only way in. You would get nominated by uh, a, a member of the PSF, and the entire PSF would vote. And if they, if you got a majority of the votes, you were in. Okay. We discovered a couple of things. For one thing, this is one thing about the Python uh, community is that if you ask them to do things like email vote, they complain a lot. So. Uh, like, oh, man, we've got to go and like vote yes or no on this whole list of people. Oh, no, it's like, geez, didn't we just do this a year ago? What, are you asking us to do this again? That sort of thing. So we changed that around now. Um, it is any member of the community, not a basic member, whatever member, even somebody who isn't one of those members, anybody can basically nominate somebody to be a fellow. And what, what being a PSF fellow means is, well, you were nominated because somebody else thought you'd done a lot of work for Python and thought you deserved it. Uh, basically, you're a voting member for life, unless you decide you don't want to be, in which case you don't have to be. But uh, So, so you're, it's a way of recognizing people who've done a lot of work, saying you put in a lot of time, uh, we're, we're going to, to designate you this way. And um, we now have a working group of former PSF fellows or existing, we're not former, we're, we're still, but you know, we have a, a, a working group that votes on those every quarter, every three months. 
So we just finished our first vote on this. Um, a, uh, I think we closed the vote a couple weeks ago, something like that. So we have our first. And this is the first time we've done this since, I think, 2013. So it's been a long time. We didn't know what to do, uh, et cetera. So we now have this working again. So uh, please, if you know somebody that you think deserves this, uh, again, feel feel willing to to nominate them because it, it's uh, again we want to have more people rather than fewer. So you don't need to feel that you have to be super strict. Okay, I'm going to run through a, a few changes just so that you know. This year we have six new board members. We have changed the terms for people on the board. It used to be a one-year term. You get reelected, get reelected, whatever. Uh, we changed that because we had a lot of people switching around and it was really hard to have people understand the system after just one year. So what we did this year, as you may know, but you may not, is we had the same vote. The top four vote getters got a four year or a three year term. The next batch got a two year term and the, the, the last three got just a one year term. And then as we go forward, each new set as they expire, we'll get a three-year term. So um, basically what this means is that uh, the PSF is stuck with me for three years. The way it goes. So, um, and we expanded the board, like I said, we hired Phyllis, we did the fellowship thing, uh, and we actually now have a form if you want to do a grant request to us. Uh, we used to have people sort of send in an email. Everybody sent in a different email, and then we would go back, and every time we would have to ask a different question, and back and forth. So now there's a form to fill out that, that then gets emailed to us, and, and we take care of it. So those are some changes real fast. Okay. Mailing lists, you can go look at that later. Um, Projects, we're working on various things. Uh, an organizer's guide, we, we kind of have in the works. Blogging, we're trying to figure out compensation for our employees. They have just started a code of conduct committee. So you can look into that if you're interested in that. We've had a code of conduct for years, but it's always been kind of general and kind of vague at the PSF level. The event level, Python is pretty good, but the PSF in general, so maybe it's time we revisit that and decide what we should do as a next step. So that, that's in the works. Uh, we did just get a grant from Mozilla, uh, a, a, a fair chunk of money, I think it's $175,000, to work on the PSF infrastructure, IPI, going to become warehouse, whatever, you know, all of that stuff that has been limping along for some time. Um, I think still some of the PyPI package distribution machines are kind of old borrowed machines and things like that. So this will give us money to pay people to work on uh, upgrading that. Uh, got a bunch of working groups. We, we adopted this from the EuroPython Society's kind of model. Uh, and, and these are ones that are in place. And I talked about the fellows one. There are a bunch of different ones. If there is a reason, anybody really can suggest a working group if they have a reason that, again, furthers the mission, then we can talk about setting up a, a, a working group. If you ever do want to do that, you can contact me. I've actually helped set up most of the new ones in the past two or three years, so um, I could kind of give you some advice on that. So I talked about that. I'm going to skip that real fast. Grants, I just want you to know this. Uh, so far, in this, in this year, we have granted $180,000 US uh, to events, whether it's Django Girls or uh, conferences or various other initiatives. That's so far, we're about three quarters of the way through the year. Uh, and about a little over half of that in terms of dollar amount rest of it goes through the Grants Working Group. Grants Working Group has people from every continent, just so you, you know. We've got two from Nigeria uh, for Africa, three from Asia, two from South America, two from North America, two from Europe, and one from Australia. So we, we, we 
have deliberately structured that so we get a wide representation because if somebody from India or Africa asks us for money, we don't know how much money they really need because costs are very different. And it's not just that they're cheaper, uh, something like maybe food is cheaper and then like having internet or Wi-Fi is just through the roof. I mean, you know, it's just all different. Uh, so, so we have that. Um, just to give you an idea, uh, this is from a member of the, uh, of the grants working group, Fernando Masanori from, from Brazil. Uh, and this is his map of things that the PSF has funded in Africa. So we've got four in Tunisia, 31 in Nigeria, two in Ghana, one in the Republic of the Congo, two in Namibia, four in South Africa, one in uh, Madagascar, six in Zimbabwe, Kenya, Uganda, Sudan. So we really are expanding beyond Europe and North America. Uh, it's, it's a similar story for, for Brazil. Uh, I, don't, I don't have the uh, canned map on that, though. So the thing is, almost all of our funding comes from profits from PyCon US. That's why we're having a membership drive. We're doing a lot of things like that. Um, so again, mentioning we're, we're working on this, this is the first time we've ever really had an organized drive for members and for donations. We've never done this before. Uh, we're, we're testing this out to see if we can do it and what we can learn so that we can um, basically find other ways to fund things. Because the profits from PyCon are staying relatively the same. It's a big conference, it makes a certain amount of money, but it's not going up nearly as fast as our demands for sponsorship are. So we need to think about other ways that we can do this, or we start saying to people who want to fund conferences and Django Girls, et cetera, it's like, okay, sorry, we're out of money. Uh, we, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. So this is something that we're trying to figure out. So if you want to contact anybody, and you've been very quiet, so I'm going to try and finish up and give you a couple seconds to answer, ask the question. If you want to contact us, PSF at python.org is the board mailing list. It goes to everybody on the board. Uh, and that, that's the typical way to ask a question that you want the PSF to answer. And probably Ava will be the person who will answer it, or Betsy, to say, OK, we've got your thing, and we'll talk about it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can contact, if you want, you can contact directly uh, any board member if there's something that you don't want to go to a whole list. Uh, you can certainly uh, contact me. Um, I haven't quite figured out the details, but uh, Ernest uh, for, for PyCon is going to use uh, Calendly so people can schedule a direct one-to-one -one time. I may do the same thing. Uh, or you can contact Ava. So those are the ways to get in touch. And that's all the resources. What do you want to ask? Yes, sir.
have it set up now so that the yearly thing can be done automatically. So you can get a recurring thing and you don't have to go back and do it if you want to do that. Um, I think at this point we don't know enough to start making those decisions, but as we start working on this, we can look at whether or not there's some limited thing. Okay, and I think he really wants us to stop because yeah. we're out of time. So, so please find me whatever if you have any questions. I'd be happy to, to talk about anything. So thank you for showing up. I, I really <laughs> He's got a conference to run. <laughs>